A thank you, a great thank you to Vice Minister Gao, and a thank you also to the Chinese Ministry of Commerce for hosting this really spectacularly important forum. I want to recognize my special friends, Mayor Villaraigosa and Governor Brown, and I can't resist setting out that it was the governor over 35 years ago who brought me into my previous important and long stint of public service. We were both a little younger at that time. I was 32 years old. The governor was a little older, but he made the way for me. And I thank you for that. Uh, thank you. Well, it is a great, great pleasure to be with Vice President Xi in this extraordinary city. Most of you, most of the U.S. members of this gathering today know well that uh, it is home for me. My wife and I raised our four daughters here. I served as the CEO here of Edison International for nearly 18 years. So it's really a particular pleasure to welcome the entire Chinese delegation to this great city. And Vice President Xi, I've had the privilege of being with you at each step through this week, but not on your trip to Iowa. And I hope, I hope that was a further wonderful gathering that conveyed to you the warmth of the American people in reaching out to you and the special return of warmth in being in Iowa at this time. All right. Uh, I want also to recognize and welcome the governors of Chinese provinces who are here with us today. The provinces, provinces are so important in reaching out and our common commercial interests. Next Tuesday, it will be 40 years since President Nixon went to China. And at that time, he correctly predicted that a bridge would be built between our countries. So not only has that bridge been built, but it gets stronger every day. As the two largest economies in the world, our relationship has never been more important. The prosperity of people in China, the people in America, and in fact, in fact, the prosperity of people around the world will be affected greatly by how effectively we cooperate and lead together. Let me turn, and I'm going to address two critical subjects in these remarks. They are trade, number one, and direct investment number two. Last year, the very first international trip I took as the Secretary of Commerce was to Beijing and to Chengdu. And in Beijing, we saw, for example, 33 American-made trucks from Wisconsin being used to fight fires and remove snow. The Department of Commerce was involved in helping the company Oshkosh enter into the Chinese market. Stories like that now are commonplace. As a result of Chinese economic growth, U.S. exports to China have grown by almost 50 percent. That's U.S. exports to China, more than 50 percent in just the past two years. They exceeded $100 billion for the first time in 2011. And then, at the same time, however, our deficit, our goods trade deficit with China, grew by about 30 percent. So we have to work harder to achieve balanced trade growth. The President is in the state of Washington today outlining steps to further increase U.S. exports. And I am pleased that this topic is a major part of today's forum. Already, 
Our Department of Commerce has 120 commercial service officers in China. That is twice the number that we have in any other country in the world. Today, American businesses are eager to know more about which business fields and sectors in China will be opened wider for foreign participation. And many of our high-tech and other businesses want to know how China will work to address concerns surrounding issues such as intellectual property, trade secret protection, as well as forced technology transfer. And the reality is that addressing these issues is not easy. And to be sure, we do have our differences, but with mutual commitment, I believe strongly we can find that common ground. As members of the World Trade Organization, there are no two countries in the world with a greater stake in an open, rules-based trading system than China and the United States. Our U.S. businesses are eager to meet the needs of Chinese consumers. And as an example of working together, we are pleased that this week, China took a meaningful step forward, committing to allow companies from around the world to compete in China in selling motor vehicle insurance within China. That's a step forward. Earlier this week in China, China more broadly committed to actively expand imports and to promote balanced trade. And as that commitment is fulfilled, it will be good for China, good for America, and good for the global economy. So let me turn then to my second subject, direct investment. Increasing the amount of direct investment both in the United States and China is another critical part of a broadened U.S.-China commercial relationship. American companies stand We are pleased that Chinese companies have moved beyond exports and have begun to make direct investment right here in the U.S. We like that. In general, we welcome companies that choose America when they decide to build a new facility and to create new jobs. Foreign direct investment in the United States has been strong from many regions around the world with $228 billion in 2010, up from $153 billion in 2009. So America is truly open for business. And more than ever, we stand ready to help foreign firms and U.S. economic development organizations create more of these win-win situations. A significant further step announced by President Obama is the Select USA initiative at the Commerce Department. Through Select USA, we will train our commercial service officers in fast-growing markets, including particularly China. And they, those service officers, will provide greater help to Chinese businesses that see the benefits of directly investing in the U.S. and creating jobs here. The Select USA will help us address, investigate, and respond to any concerns that Chinese investors might have regarding our rules and regulations. So in closing, It is clear that there are common ideas and principles that must be instilled as the bedrock of the U.S.-China relationship. A level playing field, balance in our economic and trade rate relationship, leadership in ensuring strong and sustainable global growth. 
This is the vision we must strive for even as we build an even stronger bridge between America and China in the 21st century. With that shared vision, we can also work together to address even more of the world's greatest challenges from security to energy and the environment to health and education and more. As the two largest economies in the world, we are called on now to cooperate more than ever before. People like all of you here today will lead the way forward in a spirit of enterprise and openness. In this year, the year of the dragon, let us unlock the full potential of our industries and our people. Working together, I am confident that the future of our countries will continue to be bright and prosperous. Thank you very much.